Well, they're just about to come out. Well, certainly the coaches and the line judge are about to come out here, Chef. Um, I think it's fair to say that um, that was a difficult semi-final for Michelle Croft and having seen Ruiz have to come back from full draw, redraw and just have a couple of seconds left to shoot an arrow and then put it in the 10. Uh, difficult to recover from, but she's going to have to step it up here, isn't she? Well, I if you look at the level of shooting in both semi-finals, I think um, Michelle needs to find something that she couldn't find in the semi-final if she wants to have any chance in this uh, bronze medal match. But um, they both start at 0-0, zero, zero, so uh, anything can still happen. Time now for the Recurve Women's Bronze Medal match. Michelle Kroppen from Germany is going to take on the American Jennifer Machino. On target number one, representing the United States of America in la banca numero uno, representando Estados Unidos de America. Jennifer Mucino Fernandez. <laughs> On target number two, representing Germany. En la banca numero dos, representando Alemania. Michelle Kroppe. <laughs> the line judge for this matchup is La juez del partido, Fatima Amuyarade. Well, here we go. Michino from the USA, 20 years old, going up against Crossan from Germany, uh, who's 27 years old. Uh, perhaps battling some demons here, going for her second ever Highlander Archery World Cup stage medal. Michino going for her first. But she wasn't too far from the middle, and that gives you an idea of the 70 meters these uh, athletes are shooting over. It's an awfully long way, Chef. Yeah, well, 70 meters is uh, very far from, from the shooting line, and the tendering is only 12.2 centimeters across, so that's like a, a decent size hand palm. Uh, it's, it's not easy to hit the 10 from that distance and we see it so often in these uh, finals matches that we've kind of grown used to it um, but i encourage anyone to uh, th that just sees this sport for the first time to try it and to uh, just get a grasp of how difficult this sport actually is yeah and, the, and the, in that the quality that we're watching here um, regularly hitting the gold which is the nine or the ten Eight. Ocho. Obviously right on cue, one athlete puts it into the eight. Very close, but she does give Michela the, uh, the chance to put this one into the ten and share the set. Eight. Well, uh, a long way from that, oh, unfortunately, for Michelle Crotter. Perhaps uh, more telling is the spread of the arrows. Yeah, and, and just the, the disappointment on her face when she walked off the line. The, the, the visible, it's almost like a hidden frustration when she walked off the line. Uh, there was a smile, but I don't think it was, it was a smile of happiness. It was just, uh, yeah kind of hiding the pain almost it's been uh, we talked about age we've, we've talked about the, the level that we're, we're looking at here but it's been a season of new faces isn't it i mean I'm, i know that we've we've seen jennifer machino fernandez at the olympic games in tokyo but we haven't seen her at this stage of the high and archery world cup and it's a, a bit of a story of the season yeah, this whole season we've seen people just rise up from, well, I don't want to say from nowhere, but um, definitely from a place that we haven't really seen them before. Um, so, yeah, it's just been a really interesting season uh, with uh, quite a couple surprises in the mix. And uh, I think it's good to have some, like, uh, variation in the, in the podiums. Shaking it up. Michelle Croft hoping to discover or rediscover some of her form that took her to Olympic bronze in a team event 
Eight. Yeah, and that's just a phase of you've got to be kidding me, not another one that goes into the eight ring. So it seems like she's just she's struggling to find whatever she needs to do to get the arrows to hit the middle. It's a real battle going on out there for the German. Yeah. Meanwhile, steely determination from Machino. Yeah, and it's becoming very clear uh, why Jennifer is here in the final fours. Um, if she's been doing this the whole week, then uh, it's just a very convincing manner of shooting. Seven enough. That's uh, two back to back sevens enough to go 4 0 up for Jennifer Machino. And she's staying very relaxed, she's not dwelling on the fact that she's uh, she shot a seven there uh, because she's got the four points, I guess. Yeah, I, I think she knew that she needed only a six to get the, sec, uh, the set win. Um, and obviously, she would have liked to have that uh, third arrow hit the tendering as well. But I mean, nothing is lost with that seven except for maybe uh, the opportunity to get a 30 in on the TV. Yeah, she's got plenty of time to worry about doing that at just 20 years old. But uh, contrasting experience on the other side of the shooting line. The coach really struggling here to um, get Crawford in the right frame of mind. And I think it really is about the frame of mind rather than anything else. She's, she's clearly got the talent. Yeah, and I, th I think it's, like you say, it's, it's a certain frame of mind that at this moment um, there is too much doubt in her head to shoot the shots that she wants to shoot. Um, and it is super difficult to get out of that, like, uh, this is unfair, why are my arrows not hitting the middle kind of mindset? Because that, uh, like, I, I've been there as well, where... Uh, I've just consistently not hit the middle, uh, even though I felt like the shots were decent. But then you start doubting yourself and thinking, am I doing something wrong or is something wrong with my equipment? Um, if I am do so doing something wrong, what am I doing wrong? Um, and you get into this like vicious circle where because you're too busy thinking about what you're doing, you cannot focus on what you should be doing uh, and therefore not hitting the middle. Well, she's hit the middle at the start of this uh, third set. 10 and uh, Machino with a measured 8 on its way and that looks like it might just have clipped the top of the line as well for a 20. Uh, I guess she felt this one's run away from her and she's just shooting more freely now and look at the result. Yeah, and I think this is what Michelle needs or well, it's clearly what she needs a, bit, a little bit of an opening but um, it also gives her a bit of breathing space and she can get this set in a convincing manner. Oh, she's done just that. Look at that. 225s followed by a 29, and Crotton is back in the match. She'll have two set points after this, whatever happens with that measure. And those arrows are starting to spray all over the place for Jennifer Machino. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, to me, it's more impressive. Not that she shoots a 29 now, but that Michelle uh, manages to you know, get herself out of that hole that she dug mentally and, and manages to reset and go for it again. Because, uh, like I said before, I've been in that situation and I've always found it difficult to get out of that place. Um, maybe that's why I consistently got fourth place rather than being on the podium. <laughs> Toughest match in the world of sport, a third place playoff. Certainly what a lot of people say. Well, the World Cup individual competition. You lose it. Did win a silver yeah. medal in Salt Lake City it's a tough place to come back from. In any case, really impressive how Michelle um, came out of that hole that she dug. And I think uh, if she can keep this going, um, I feel like the momentum is kind of like shifting towards her now. If, uh, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because... Um, I think she'd given up uh, the, the on the match and so just completely relaxed and that's what comes of uh, relaxing. She wins the set, 
Now does the pressure come back on because she's like, well, I'm back in this now. Yeah, and I think uh, maybe a little bit of credit can go to uh, Mark Dellenbach there because I think they had some uh, some good conversation in the 40 seconds or so that they have between the two sets. Yeah. <laughs> Start of the fourth, Kroppen seems to be continuing that form. Another 10 for her. How is Machina going to recover from a shaky third set for her? It's an interesting sport in the, in the sense that you are all dependent on what you are doing. Um, and in a training setting with nobody watching, all of the archers on the circuit know how to shoot an arrow into the ten ring. But it gets such uh, it's so different when um, somebody is shooting head to head with you. You're shooting in an alternate setting where you shoot one arrow each. Um, it shouldn't matter. It should be the same game, but it does matter. It, it truly is a different game whenever you shoot against somebody else in a setting like this. Don't look too happy with that, but uh, she's put this one out of reach. And from 4 0 down, has leveled this one up at 4 4 and will go into a fifth. And final set after a 25, the second in a row for Machino. And she looks all at sea. I think you're right, you called it. Momentum has shifted completely. Yeah, it's as if Michelle has found the middle and has found what she needs to do. You can see that her face is, is beaming with a bit more confidence now. Um, whereas Jennifer is now kind of looking for what's going wrong. And she, she was like, did that one go to the right as well? As if she didn't expect that to go to the right. So it's a... Yeah, a, a bit of a momentum shift, um, but as easily as that shifted just now, uh, it could go back to Jennifer as well, or we could see a shoot off if they both manage to hit the middle, or both don't manage to hit the middle, so the match is not over for sure. Moving into crucial well, set still first struggling with those one. demons, but uh, winning the battle, the internal line battle at the moment. And has got herself right back in the match. Four set points apiece. Who would have thought this after the second set? But it is what it is, and we go into a fifth and final set. Can Crofton continue this remarkable change in performance? Machino to shoot first. Oh, there's quite a bit of wind there. And an impressive nine in limited time. didn't see that much that was wrong with that shot so it might have just been that it was taking it just a little bit too long and then she pulled it to the left but if Jennifer can put another one of those arrows into the gold then she'll walk away with this match regardless of what Michelle shoots now so this will be out of reach for Cotton if Machino shoots a nine, gathers herself, goes into full draw. Bit of a longer hold, but into the ten. And a bronze medal is there for Jennifer Machino Fernandez from the USA. And we have to wait for a reset on the clock there. Some music started playing, and I think it put Croppen off. And she's just uh, going to ask for the 20 seconds to be put back on the clock so she can finish her set. Now, it's a harsh way to finish the match she knows it's out of reach but she's doing the professional thing you have to say she's uh, asked for the clock to be reset because I think um, 
Someone somewhere thought the match was over, but there was still one arrow to be shot. And of course, this is for posterity, for the record books. And everyone getting right behind Croppen. She's going to finish fourth here in Colombia. And she finished with a 10. Looks pretty good to me. And that is a 10. A crawl ending for Michelle Croppen. Dragged out a little bit longer than it had to be. But hats off to Jennifer Machino from the USA at 20 years old. Has just picked up her first ever Hyundai Archery World Cup stage medal. She'll be on the podium in the bronze medal position just a little bit later on today.